Hello everyone, my name is Lucy Letterhandler and I am the curator here at the Gallery of Southwestern Manitoba. I would like to thank you all for joining us tonight for another vernacular spotlight where we feature local artists from Brandon and nearby communities and get to know a little more about how they work and what inspires them. Two weeks ago, we got to know Jerry Oliver. If you missed that, you can just search Jerry and her sheep on YouTube to watch it later. Um, or you can just click that link. We'll put them in the comments below if you're watching us on Facebook. But today, I am so excited to introduce our next featured artist, Chris Reed. Um, many of you will know that I arrived in Brandon less than a month ago. I know so few people here, and Chris is one of them. It's been an absolute thrill to get to know her, though I just realized that this video is the first time that I ever got to see the bottom half of her face in the last couple weeks. So uh, the last time Chris had a solo show at the Art Gallery of Southwestern Manitoba was in 2013 with an exhibit of new works titled, I Like to Believe I Am Telling the Truth, which was really concerned with heritage and the ideas of home and family. And now in a little over two months, we'll have the pleasure of hosting her again with a solo exhibition titled Nothing Smells in Absolute Zero, and that's going to open on April 8th. But for now, please enjoy this installment of our vernacular spotlight series, Chris and Her Eggs. I'm originally from Alberta, uh, grew up in a small town just uh, northeast of Edmonton. It was uh, pretty well um, a Ukrainian community, so, um, I, you know, culturally uh, things like egg painting was always always around, well it's properly called egg writing or uh, pisenka. Um, but I actually didn't get involved in it uh, until I was an adult. I, um, I went to uh, university, to the University of Alberta, did a BFA there, and uh, then did a master's degree at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Ended up returning to Edmonton, lived there for about 13 years. I had uh, started working on becoming a professional artist. Uh, was picking up work in all kinds of different, you know, like basically whatever I could, teaching community art classes. Um, I had a job though as the art advisor for the Catholic hospitals. Um, after 10 years, that job was cut. Uh, they were advertising for a curator here in Brandon. I applied, I came here. Um, was curator here for about three years. To becoming a practicing artist, I was a housing resource worker up until a few months ago, and now I'm working on developing a sober living facility. In terms of the arts practice, I do something every day. Um, a friend of mine said, art is like a muscle, um, so you have to keep working on it. I kind of like that idea, so I do something artistic, whether it's egg painting, whether it's painting, because I was trained basically as a painter. Um, I also make sculptures out of things like mat board and uh, whatever else I can find. I've got some eggs in the Prairie Vernacular show that's currently at the Art Gallery of Southwestern Manitoba. So I am going to uh, basically demonstrate how I go about making eggs. Okay, so um, today I'm going to uh, demonstrate, show how, um, how I go about 
painting uh, an egg. Um, the technique I use, uh, the egg writing technique, is traditional. Um, however, I don't make um, traditional eggs. Uh, rather, I think of the eggs kind of like a sketchbook, kind of like a story. So the first part um, is to uh, mix dyes. And the uh, reason that you start with mixing the dyes is because you have to use boiling water and it takes a while for the water to cool down. Once I've completed drawing on, you know, the pencil drawing on an egg, um, the next step is to start uh, putting layers of wax on, on the egg um, and dyeing it. Uh, egg writing is a wax resist technique very much like batik. Um, the tools I use are called Keats Guz, and they come in different sizes. Just like pen points come in different sizes, the Keats Guz come in different sizes as well. There's a little end here, um, a little cup where, you, uh, where I put the wax, um, and I use beeswax. Uh, it's pure, can't use paraffin because um, paraffin, depending on the mixture of oil and whatever else is in it. Um, there's different melting temperatures and uh, the Keatskas could become clogged. So pure beeswax is uh, better to use. So getting right into um, working on an egg, the first thing is to um, come up with an idea. So what do you sketch on an egg? Um, Traditional eggs tend to be very patterned and very detailed. I am looking at narration and storytelling and also kind of developing my own set of symbols. So in my work, when the skinny cat-headed animal creature is around, it's usually doing things that my husband does, like fixing things, changing light bulbs, ironing, so it's very much about domestic, um, kind of basically boring life. One of the challenges that working on eggs has is that if you try to do anything that has any kind of perspective in it, obviously you're going on a curved surface, so your perspective gets really wonky and I think that that adds to the interest in the egg and some of the drawing challenges. How do you make someone aware that your character is um, in a room um, or outside in a landscape? Um, and oftentimes, uh, like if you're drawing a wall, if you're drawing anything vertical, all, your, all of your points will meet at the top or meet at the bottom. Um, if you're drawing a figure, um, the thickest, uh, you know, because the round part is the widest, you're going to end up maybe with um, all of them having big stomachs. Um, so you have to kind of make up your mind about how this story is going to be told. Um, and what, you, what, basically what I can live with in terms of distortions. It's that balance between um, what can be exaggerated and what can't be exaggerated. What I find, like going over the eggs, um, I want to be careful about how much, like you can't erase off the egg or the dye won't take. Um, I have to be careful with even how much I'm washing the eggs because I can't, uh, if there's variations in the shell, the dyes take differently. So it's a, it's a little bit of being able to be spontaneous and being able to accept mistakes. Um, and so yeah, it's basically just figuring out what I'm gonna do on you know, what story I'm gonna tell with whatever is initially inspiring me. I have several eggs where, I, I guess, how did this whole, how, why did I decide to um, do egg painting at all? Um, part of it is my heritage. Uh, part of it 
is that um, I was using a lot of Baba Yaga imagery in my drawings and Baba Yaga is a Slavic tale uh, similar in some ways to Hansel and Gretel. Um, it's about a witch that lives in the forest in a house that um, when she leaves gets up on its chicken legs and moves around. Um, and she also, like the story of Hansel and Gretel, she eats children, she makes a fence out of their bones. Um, so, you know, house with chicken legs. Um, and then why the Baba Yaga houses at all? And that goes back to what I was doing for a living, which was helping uh, homeless people uh, find housing. Um, so I've become quite obsessed with housing and, uh, um, the Baba Yaga house seemed to represent to me uh, the idea that housing is scarce. What is housing? Um, how secure are we with our housing? Um, how do you protect your home? Um, so that was how I was using that particular image and that's how I got connected to the eggs. So that was basically just a demo to say, you can draw on an egg with a pencil. Uh, What I'm really struck by with Chris's process is how she really isn't at all worried with the distinction between these grand old myths and her little inside jokes like Baba Yaga and a skinny cat head man who changes light bulbs. And you'll see a lot of these motifs in her upcoming exhibit here. Um, but uh, in what's coming, she's taking a long serious look at the places that the unhoused people of Brandon call home. I think everyone will really enjoy it. If you want a sneak peek of any of the work in that show or just to stay apprised of what Chris is up to, you can follow her on social media, which we will post in the comments here. So that is it for tonight's Vernacular Spotlight. Thank you all so much for joining us. And just a reminder that next week, we are going to keep it going with a tour of the Memory and Memoria theme on Tuesday, February 16th at 6.30 p.m. And another vernacular spotlight with Dwayne Claridge, who does something a little different, injecting his clay pieces with a steampunk aesthetic. And that's on Thursday, February 18th at 7 p.m. Both of those events are right here. And very exciting news for our local audience. We will be reopening back to the public with abbreviated hours and by appointment only, starting next Tuesday at noon. So be in touch with us to book a spot. I can't tell you what a joy it was to watch Chris talk um, and be able to see all of the detail and textures in these eggs in person. So be sure to be in touch. Uh, give us a call or send us an email to book a spot so you can see this wonderful exhibit in person. So until then, I hope you all enjoy your long weekend and I will see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>